relationship to the earth has always defined us. Farmers gathered, hunters tracked, and kings divided the land. For centuries, indigenous people traveled through Oklahoma en route to somewhere else. Better grazing, better hunting, richer land. By the time Native Americans were forced to relocate here, it was in large part because the land had no significant economic value. Oil changed that. Well, I know from my own relatives that ran in the Oklahoma land race, the 1891, the land they got was pitiful. I mean, it was full of rocks, it was barren. And I think that there was also, unfortunately, a reason that natives, native tribes were placed here. Is, I mean, it wasn't the choice pieces of land. It, where the choice pieces of land were, the white settlers had already got there, the railroads were already there, the infrastructure was there. So when you get out here in Oklahoma and you start seeing this stuff bubbling on the ground, as my uncle said, it was just pennies from heaven. Before there was a state, before there was even a city, there was oil. And with few other prospects in the area, we quickly married ourselves to that new industry. For the next hundred years, our rise and fall as a state became tied to oil more than any other state in the Union. Prior to statehood in 1907, Oklahoma was Indian territory. Native Americans held the rights to this entire area. It had been known that there's some product here. It had already been found in Pennsylvania. So with Standard Oil up there, these entrepreneurs come down here and start looking at us. And Foster was the first one that got through the government a blanket lease that covered 1.4 plus million acres. And now it started off on a small scale, but by the turn of the century, 1920, that's when they knew they hit those prehistoric dome caps, which is uh, multi millions and millions of barrels of oil. Henry Foster was the first to negotiate a large scale agreement with the Osage Nation. He signed a 10 year deal which covered 1.5 million acres. George Keeler and William Johnstone were business partners who had both married into property rights. Together they formed Cudahy Oil, which brought in the famed Nellie Johnstone Oil Well. It was the spring of 1897, and that well became Oklahoma's very first commercial oil well. It would pump oil for the next 50 years. To put it in perspective, in 1900, they, they produced 6,000 barrels of, of oil out of Osage County. Um, by 1912, that number had risen to 11 million barrels. So from 6,000 barrels to 11 million barrels, it literally was like throwing a light switch. I mean, it went from nothing to just huge um, in, in, in a decade. The oil boom hit Bartlesville and the Osage Hills like a thunderstorm. It was loud, it was messy, and it quickly flooded the area. The survivors of that storm became the names you still know today. H.V. Foster came to Bartlesville in 1904 to take over the family business. He renegotiated the huge lease agreement with the Osage Nation before ultimately establishing the Seminole and Oklahoma City oil fields. I believe that H.V. Foster is probably the best kept secret in the oil industry. Um, I, I think there's a lot of people who don't know anything about him and that's okay. That's okay because I think he would really want it that way. But what he did was um, really amazing. I mean, when you think about the Osage, then you think about the Seminole field, then you think about the Oklahoma City oil field. Um, those are three, those were three prolific um, fields that were developed by, by him and his crew. The most fascinating thing Henry Vernon Foster did, he rode out on horseback with his surveyor and they took that 1.5 million acre map and they started dividing sections of land into 160 acre uh, checkerboard pattern basically. He had retain one block and then lease out the other one to someone else like, a, like the Phillips brothers or Getty or Sinclair, these very famous names we hear let them do all the exploration and, and finding the oil, and then he would come in right beside it and drill. If it wasn't for him, 
Oklahoma's oil wouldn't have happened as quickly as it did. And uh, with as many famous people that we know of, the companies that still exist even today. A year after H.V. Foster arrived to Indian Territory, two brothers started a company of their own. Frank and Ellie Phillips had cashed in all their favors and lost nearly all they had on dry oil wells. They had just enough money for one more gamble. And in 1906, it finally paid off when the Anna Anderson came in. That was the beginning of a global energy company. And Indian Territory was sort of a refuge for, for the worst of the worst. Ex-cons, people that were on the run, they fled to here. It was wilder than the Wild West. <laughs> it said there was an expression that there was no law west of St. Louis and no God either. In the blink of an eye, by 1920, Frank Phillips is here. He's got buildings going up in Bartlesville. We've gone from the most dangerous part in the country um, to really a small town of sophistication. And why did that happen? Only one reason, that was oil. Suddenly, everyone was in the oil business. That looked like an opportunity to Henry Ford Sinclair. Instead of slowly building a company from the ground up, he combined the assets of several small petroleum companies into one. He became the largest independent oil producer in the mid-continent. Eventually, his company Sinclair would be one of the top seven oil producers in America. Oil was erupting from the earth in Oklahoma, but we needed to move it across the country. So H.C. Price started a small welding company with three employees to help weld oil pipeline. Less than eight years later, they had grown to 200 employees. Eventually known as the H.C. Price Company, its national headquarters remains an international landmark as legendary architect Frank Lloyd Wright's only skyscraper. There was a zinc depression about 1920, and so he lost his job at the smelters. So he opened an electric welding shop on uh, Second Street. They went from welding oil tanks to welding pipelines, and electric welding was a big improvement. So that expanded quickly and he was welding all over the United States. Even 30 years after the Nellie Johnstone became Oklahoma's first commercial oil well, the industry and technology were still relatively new. Oil was often hard to reach and extract from the ground. Innovators like Armaeus Artunov changed the course of history with the development of an electric submersible motor and pump. It became known as the Cadillac of the fluid lifting business. A lot of these great minds that maybe would throw a, a, an idea to someone in, in the West or back East, it would fall flat. But a guy like Frank Phillips even, with that Reta pump, he was the one that uh, really latched on to that gentleman's submersible pump when everyone else just wouldn't give him the time of day. And so you get great minds thinking together like we have here in Bartlesville and voila. By the 1930s, the oil industry began to grow and mature into the worldwide enterprise we recognize today. I am sure that Oklahoma, the entrepreneurial spirit, the pioneering spirit of Oklahomans and Bartlesville people, uh, we would have found something else to make us great. If it hadn't have been oil, we'd have just found something else. I think that the main item is that we're not a check. We're not that oil money. It, it's a big part of us, but we have a, so many centuries of being who we were. I would want them to know your people were survivors. Yeah, the, the, the impact on our community and the impact on this state because of the philanthropic spirit of, of, of oil, the people that made their fortunes in oil is, is huge. And that's really one of the important standards that, that, that our generation needs to remember. You know, what are we leaving behind? Um, 
you know, because we've reaped the benefits of what these guys left. Who's, who's filling those shoes? The legacy of those early oil pioneers is still present today. For more than a century, we have been building on that legacy, adapting, growing, and diversifying as we go. Oil has been our history in Oklahoma. And even as the world changes, which it surely will do, it will also be part of our foreseeable future, a future that is ours for the growing.